how's it going people all right so now we're looking at shear and bending in beams we're still at the intermediate level reaching towards the moderate uh, this is still the basics of mechanical design it is a third year second year unit uh, derived by Nazrul Assam, Dr. Nazrul Assam from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Curtin University, West Australia. Okay, so the question we'll be looking at today, here. Now, when we read a question like this, okay, firstly, you want to look at the terms that are actually being, uh, so the things that are being asked for here. So we're being asked for the shear force and bending moment diagrams. We, they want us to draw them. And then they want us to find the value of the shear and bending at the middle. Okay, so you've got two questions in one. All right, and you're giving your diagram here. Okay, and you notice it's split into three quadrants. All right, so let's immediately delve into this question. Okay, so let's just not get scared. Let's just remember that with everything, there's a way to find out. Okay, so simply just draw lines upwards. Okay, for these points in which would react, in which you think would react with forces pushing down, okay? So Newton's third law, for every action there must be an opposite and, and let's just say, yeah, opposite reaction, okay? Now the for, uh, let's just say, the way we work this out is we sum the forces that are going upwards equals to the sum of the forces going downwards and the only force that is going downwards here is the 4.0 kilonews we're working in kilonews now okay and now what did i just say the sum of forces in the y direction equals zero okay that means forces going up cancel forces going down you get nothing in the end the beam just remains the same okay now, let's get onto the slightly confusing part, which is the moments. Moments equals zero. Okay, so moments going this way and moments going that way both cancel each other out. Okay, so there's no bending occurring in this, um, there's no like turning occurring in this beam at all. It's just remained static. Okay, this is, remember this is statics we're working here with, statical mechanics. Now, we wanted to do it about a point, so I want to do it about A. Okay, so what does that tell us? zero, the distance in the x direction multiplied by the reaction force A, plus, or let, for, our, for our case, this is, um, <coughs> excuse me, this is minus four multiplied by the distance of one, okay, because we multiply the distance from A to the force here, point force going downward, this creates a momentum force if it is multiplied by the distance, okay? So that's four kilonewton meters if it's multiplied by one. The reason why it's negative is because we're taking general directions this way as positive, okay? So this is not a positive moment, this is actually a negative going this way about A, okay? Don't get confused with the directions. Uh, moving on, so minus four, uh, okay, now this is plus um, previously mentioned, this is a plus direction, plus 2.8, this is kilonewtons we're working, remember, and this is already in moments, so there's no need to multiply by distance, do not get confused with multiplying by, this, by distance, because what happens if you do, you'll end up with newton meters squared, uh, makes no sense, okay, so we want, we want to work with newton meters, in, as that is the moments units, okay, plus, that's a plus force going upwards, so plus moments going upwards, plus the total beam's distance uh, B, reaction force at B. What did I say previously? The whole thing equals zero. Okay. Now, this cancels out. 3RB goes on one side, and we throw everything else on the other side. Okay, so 4 subtracts 2.8. 8 equals 1.2. Okay, 1.2. Therefore, RB equals 0.4 kilonewtons. Kilonewtons, not newton meters, okay? Don't forget. Alright, now back to this equation that we have derived here. Substitute the RB value into here. 
and you would easily be able to work out RA. RA equals 4.0 subtracts 0.4, which inevitably equals 3.6 kilonewton. We found the reaction forces, high school math. Now to move on to the actual mechanical design part. Uh, this is the confusing part for many people how to actually draw these uh, bending moment, shear moment diagrams, etc. Alright, so let's just quickly illustrate some lines like this. Okay. Alright, the reason why I'm doing lines like this, you'll see in a minute, but whenever you get a question like that, just draw out lines wherever you see forces and reaction forces, okay? Yeah. Uh, that's what I normally do. Teachers, uh, some teachers do it differently. Some professors, etc. All right. So the first stroke here would be our. Okay, this would be our shear force diagram. Shear force diagram. And the second part here would be. A bending moment diagram, BMD. Alright, so we can observe what's actually happening in our shear force diagram easily because we have a reaction force A of 3.6 kilonewtons, okay? So A, remember, 3.6 kilonewtons reaction force at A, reaction force at A, so here is A, okay, this is our A point going upwards, positive 3.6, okay, 3.6 kilonewtons, all right? Now, because there's no forces acting along here, we can assume easily that this is going to be a linear force along here. It's just a straight, sorry, it's a constant force along there, it's just a straight line, okay, along that one meter distance. When it reaches here, it intercepts with the one meter, it goes downwards about four meter, uh, four kilonewtons, all right? So subtract f um, 3.6 by 4, you end up getting negative 0.4 kilonewtons, right? Now remember this is also linear. Remember moments does not affect a shear force diagram. Yeah, it keeps going straight until it hits here. What was our reaction force at B? 0.4, perfect. 0.4 take plus, um, yeah, 0.4 takes 0.4. Zero. There you go. The whole thing is e at an equilibrium. It's static. It does not move. Okay? That means our shear force diagram goes from zero to zero. Bending moment diagram is similar. Same thing occurs there. Alright? But we just, um, honestly, that this is cheating. This is um, jumping the gun, going too far ahead. You're gonna, you ha Firstly, we have to actually work through formulas. Having formulas for each and every line and working through it the difficult way because we need formulas for the bending moment diagram to see how the lines look in individual areas. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm talking about later on. So when you get a question like this and you're trying to find out how to draw the bending moment um, say let bending moment diagram, uh, you have to cut this beam into sections, okay? Now in my next video uh, part two of this, I'm going to tell you how to actually cut into uh, just to slice bits and pieces from this beam and work out individually the force, um, the forces and moments at one side only. Okay, and this is going to help us out a lot. Okay, so thank you for watching. Go to part two for this. Don't forget, you can't just stop here. Okay, thank you for watching.